Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands he will bear you up, they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he said to him, All these I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Since most of us are unlikely to spend 40 days fasting in a desert, um, let's take a minute and just kind of reimagine this situation that Jesus finds himself in. So imagine you have been out of work for over a month, which is not hard for a lot of people to do these days. Um, Let's pretend that it's August in Arkansas and your air conditioning unit is broken and you can't afford to fix it. And all you got left in your refrigerator is some ketchup, a jar of pickles, and a carton of yogurt that expired two weeks ago. And you want to Google if yogurt can ever really spoil and how to tell if it has spoiled when you realize that you haven't paid your cell slash internet slash TV bundle bill and you have no internet access or phone service. And that is when he walks in. And while you're sweating bullets in a wrinkled, dirty t-shirt, he looks cool as a cucumber in a crisp white shirt with no pit stains and pants with a crease so sharp they feel like they might cut you if you get too close. And he says he has got a deal for you. And all you got to do is stop being the good guy and be the bad guy. Stop playing for Team Almighty God and join Team Already Gone. And the slick man opens the door of the refrigerator and it's magically filled with all of your favorite things to eat and drink. Stick with me, he says, and this box will never be empty. And then he hands you a letter from your bank, giving you the deed to your house. Or, he said, how would you like to be protected from all harm for the rest of your life? No more worrying about a drunk driver swerving into your lane or a diagnosis of cancer or a gunman shooting up your school slash church slash office building. I can fix it so that you will never come to any harm. Or maybe, he says, maybe what you want is power. Power over the kid who bullied you in elementary school. Power over anybody who's ever laughed at you. Power to set your own agenda, power to make more money than you have ever dreamed of. And all you have to do is ditch God and follow me. Could you resist? I mean, you're tired and hot and hungry and broke and alienated. And the man with all the answers shows up. I mean, what would be the offer that tempted you most? The full fridge, the protection from danger, the promise of power and success? Now, historically, this passage has been used to guilt us into feeling bad that we are not more like Jesus. I mean, after all, Jesus resisted temptation out in the desert after 40 days with no food. Surely we can buck up and do the same. But um, what if instead of this being Jesus setting some impossible example for us to live up to, Jesus is showing us the way as humans to say no to temptation? So just stay with me here for a sec. So Jesus could have just stopped Satan in his tracks and said, you know what, I'm not even listening to you. Go away. But no, Jesus plays Satan's game and responds to every temptation of Satan with the word of God. Jesus engages in something that generally just annoys the heck out of me, um, what I like to call defensive proof texting, um, tossing out a passage of scripture in answer to any challenge anyone presents. However, I'm for it in this instance. Because what Jesus is doing is not standing on his own. The human part of Jesus is not standing on his own, but standing on that of the word of God. His defense is God's way and God's righteousness 
against the challenges of the devil or Satan or evil or however you like to call that force in your life. So what we're really talking about here is not temptation, but pride. And again, stick with me. Because when we get down to the heart of the matter, it is our own pride that leads us into temptation and causes us to succumb to temptation. And, you know, to paraphrase the Avett brothers, I'm not talking about the kind of pride your mama had. This actually is the kind of pride the Bible says will turn you bad. And, and it's not just the Bible that says it. The ancients came up with the seven deadly sins, and they said that pride was at the root of all of them. Um, Thomas Aquinas, who's a big theologian, that, uh, a Catholic theologian, said that the inordinate love of self is the cause of all sin. So, so just take a moment to think about the times you've been tempted to do something you knew was unethical, illegal, immoral, or, or even just simply unwise. I mean, chances are you were not tempted to do something you knew was wrong because it would benefit someone else. I mean, sure, you might come up with a story of stealing bread to feed the hungry or like a John Q story that involves holding a hospital hostage so that your son gets the medical treatment he needs. But, but generally, day to day, our, our temptations lie in those things that benefit us. Those things we think will make our lives easier, that will make us feel better, make us look better, make us cooler, smarter, richer, or more powerful in the eyes of others. So when temptation comes knocking, we tell ourselves all sorts of lies. We tell ourselves, I can do this and nothing bad will happen. I am smart enough not to get caught. And one of my favorites, I can do this and not cross any lines. I have a friend who says that pride is knowing exactly what God wants us to do and believing that we know better. And humility is just the opposite of that. So when we practice humility, we live a life knowing that we, in fact, do not know more than God. And when we live that kind of life, then the devil has very little power over us. We simply don't need the things that he or she or it has to offer. And you know, following Jesus Christ isn't about magic tricks that turn stones into bread or self-stock our refrigerators. Um, it isn't about counting on angels to catch you when you fall or to stand and block a bullet or an out-of-control car. It, it's not about achieving great wealth or success. Jesus didn't come so that we could have easy answers and safety nets and power trips. He came as a servant. And even we're just barely into Matthew and he is already beginning to show us that he came to be a humble servant in order to show us the way to the life that God intends for us all. Our lives, our lives belong to God. And there are times, even though we do belong to God, we will find ourselves out of work and in a sweltering apartment with no food in the house. And when those situations come along, when we are wandering in the desert of our own making or a desert of someone else's making, the last thing we want to do is make a deal with the devil. What we do want to do, what we need to do, what we hope we will be able to do is say, Dear God, please get me out of this because I know I can't do it on my own. So let's try, let's give up on resisting temptation and instead let's get rid of pride and embrace humility. Living a humble life, knowing that God knows better than we do, it will not change the devils at work in this world, but it will keep their work from changing us. May we continue to walk humbly with our God as we journey together in Christ. Amen.